my dear friends and colleagues. Today I am deeply honored, but humbled by this opportunity to speak at the second Oslo Forum of Freedom and Human Rights. This opportunity for me vindicates years of struggle around the world, sometimes under very chilling conditions of exile and life-threatening situations. But it also affirms the universality of the struggle for justice and human rights. It testifies to how international solidarity remains an indispensable tool for the international human rights movement. Today, for many of us, from our lonely parts of the world, we gather here to share and reflect, but also discover the extent to which others share our conviction and our commitment for human rights. I pay special homage to many of my colleagues around the world, and particularly in Liberia, colleagues and friends of the student movement and the youth movement who were silenced by the brutality of the Liberian Civil War. In the silence, I pay tribute to the gallantry and comradeship. It is the blood, the sweat, and the tears that have made it possible for me to be here today. Liberia is a nation in West Africa which has experienced one of the world's most brutal civil war, with more than 200,000 people reportedly killed. It was founded by free slaves from the United States of America who sought freedom from slavery and discrimination. But Liberia's foundational institutions replicated the legacy of slavery thereby perpetuating an enclave best described as discriminatory. The intended consequence of this discrimination led to dissent and eventually a civil war, which raged between 1989 and 2003. The war left in its trail massive violation of human rights, rape, plunder, wanton destruction, which all can best be described as man's inhumanity to man. As a young man growing up in the squalor of Liberia, I have always been convinced that there will always be a future of hope and a reason for promise. My condition of poverty and denial strengthened my conviction and sharpened my understanding of the contradiction in the Liberian society, but also in the world. I commenced my journey for struggle for human rights at the early age of 11, working in our communities as a youth leader, a student leader, and later as a human rights lawyer. My encounter with the law started as a young student when a military coup occurred in 1980 leading to executions of individuals, banning of student leaders, the arrest of youth leaders, and many of us were charged and tried before illegal tribunals and politically subservient courts. In 1986, after so-called free and fair elections in Liberia and the restoration of constitutional rule, I was part of the student movement in Liberia who challenged the ban on student political activities and termed it unconstitutional. The Constitution was the basis for our claim. Between 1986 and 87, I was arrested on many occasions, and upon completion from the university, I paid the price. I was arrested, I was banned from employment in my own country, and I was subsequently banned from traveling out of Liberia. My relatives and friends were pursued. Some of them were dismissed from the government positions. I then sought to challenge the government. I attempted to challenge it by using the law. I went to many lawyers. Most of them were afraid. Most of them were afraid of possible reprisals by the dictator at the time. 
It was this experience that compelled me to enroll in law school. I enrolled in law school not for profit motives. I enrolled because I felt and believed that I could, with my passion and conviction, bring relief to many other Liberians and people around the world who needed rescue and who needed the opportunity of due process. I saw then, as I see now, that the rule of law can be an important vehicle for social change. Instead of being bitter and angry, I sought to transform my victimization into a testimony for my struggle for justice. I struggled to offer those deprived, and even those who deprived me of due process, an opportunity for justice. In 1991, I joined the Catholic bishops in Liberia to establish Liberia premier human rights organization, the Commission for Justice and Peace. Through this organization, Liberia's most renowned program for indigent was organized in 1992. Later, I also organized the Foundation for International Dignity Find, which represented refugees and displaced people throughout the West African region. Under my leadership, the Catholic Justice and Peace Commission became Liberian leading voice and providing hope in a society that had gone mad, that was at self-destruct. This was the array of hope that we discovered in Liberia. In the face of institutionalized violence and state criminalization, both of these institutions demanded that the rule of law remain critical to the advancement of peace and justice in Liberia. These institutions continue to work to end years of impunity and corporate complicity. In 2005, Liberia's election offered a new hope for optimism but we all really believe that it must be guided by continuous vigilance. I became the first Minister of Labor after the war and during the elections, being convinced that I would not be a member of the cabinet in my government forever. I always know and even know now that I will be your human rights advocate forever. I have proceeded on many occasions to change our laws, repeal laws that offend human dignity and the rights of worker, repeal anti-labor legislation that prohibited strikes, and have embarked on a comprehensive national labor reform to restore dignity to the labor movement in Liberia. For years, management control workers' unions are now being replaced through free, fair, and democratic elections in Liberia. Workers' unions are now receiving international recognition and honor for the first time in our country. We have ample evidence by this that governments and government officials must be champions for the defense of human rights and use government to transform society for the good of the people. Those who lead with compassion and conviction will succeed. Those who choose to be dictators will fail. I come here today because justice and Liberia has triumphed. Those who died in pursuit of justice have triumphed. Liberia is on an irreversible path to progress. No one will succeed if they seek not to consolidate respect for human rights over its dehumanization. Those who seek to abuse rather than respect human rights will fail. Those who seek to plunder rather than account will equally fail. For the millions who have joined this movement for change and respect for human rights, I say there is hope. There is hope, my friends. There's hope. There's hope because the Universal Declaration of 1945 unveils commitments and obligations. Treaties and conventions in the 60s have legalized our commitment to human rights. But various tribunals and international institutions today now guarantees accountability and an end to impunity. We have prevailed, my friends, 
but the struggle for justice is not over. It is not over because millions in Sudan weep every day for change. It is not over because the bloodshed in many parts of the world, in Asia and many other places, cry out for liberation. It is not over because democracy and human rights still remain under threat all over the world. For those of us who doubt the possibility of victory, I say don't ask why. Don't ask the question why, but ask why not, because it is possible. You must explore all that is possible to deal with what seems impossible. We will and we must win because I am here today after years of imprisonment, death threats, exile, and my miraculous return home where I am now serving to make a difference. This is the triumph of justice for many of us who continue to struggle. There is hope. There is hope because Milosevic was arrested. There is hope because Pinochet was arrested. There is hope because many and several other warlords throughout the world who abuse human rights have been arrested to face justice. But they have been accorded due process. This forum must affirm to an often gullible international community that peace must be built and founded on justice and respect for the rule of law. Finally, let me say, what has always motivated me. There is a universal contest between good and evil. Good will eventually triumph over evil. But good cannot triumph by retreating from evil. Good must confront evil. By confronting evil, we offer society a moral alternative. By confronting of evil, we test our conviction. And our conviction must undergo the most severe test to convert others. This is why we struggle, my friends. I believe that we will all try and we will win the struggle for human rights. I thank you all very much.